Hi folks, Scott Sager with you here, RTC TV4. Well, uh, we like to think that we're creating some stars here in Fulton County and the uh, surrounding areas. And I've got one of those stars right here. This is McKenna Stricker. She's going to be starring in her new show here on RTC TV4. Hi, McKenna. Hi. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. So you've got a new show for us, huh? Yeah. All right, What's what are we calling this show? It's actually 4-H from my view. 4-H from my view. Yeah. I like it. So what are you going to do with that show? Well, we really go around to different farms and we're telling people what it's like to be on the inside of the farm, not nice. just looking out. Okay, so not just driving by the farm and looking at the goats and the sheep and everything, but mm -hmm. actually stopping at the farm and seeing what's happening there. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Well, we've got a first episode already done, right? Yes. And where did we go for this? We went to Olive Trail Cattle Company. Olive Trail Cattle, cattle Company. And who uh, owns that cattle company? Roberta Kepler. Roberta Kepler, along with Mark Kepler, who we know here on RTC from all the shows. Of course, Mark's done a great job at the Purdue Extension Office here in Fulton County. But uh, you got to meet his wife and you got to play with some animals. What kind of animals do we play with? Uh, they have goats. They have all kinds of meat goats and dairy goats and cattle, but we didn't do much with the cattle. Not too much with the cattle in the first episode. But uh, I learned a lot about goats. I'll tell you, you will too as you watch this episode. Did you learn a lot about goats? Yeah, over the past year I've learned a lot from that family. Excellent. So you're in 4-H. Are you in 4-H up in Marshall County? Yes. Okay. So um, you show goats now? Yeah, I show for them actually. Okay, so you're showing their goats. What else are you doing up there with 4-H? I started off this year doing poultry and then... I have done for the past three years swine that we raise. Okay, on our so you guys you guys raise swine on your farm. Yeah, excellent. Were you at the swine show the other day? Yes, excellent. A lot of people tuned in to watch that swine show. Well, we're happy to have you. Of course, your dad Steve been doing great work with us. Let's give a shout out to mom who has to put up with Steve. <laughs> but um, they they're big supporters of yours, aren't they? Yes, excellent. Are you a big supporter of your dad's too? Yes. 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 Now, uh, big sis going away to college, so you're going to be in. Uh, Kind of in charge of the household now, right? <laughs> yeah. You looking forward to that? A little bit. It's going to be lonely. It's going to be lonely. I like that. She's going to miss her sister. Well, um, let's talk about the show itself. So we've got the first episode. You're going to see the premiere right after you watch us talk here. But uh, this first episode, you, you met with the Keplers. You went up there. You learned a lot about goats. What are we going to do for some of the other episodes that these folks are going to see? I think we might actually go to a couple of dairy farms Ooh. and... Learn how to milk? Well, yeah, milk okay. and then walk them around. Okay, and... learn how to handle the dairy cows, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that'll be a lot of fun. Well, we enjoy uh, all the coverage during Fair Week here. We thought it would be a great week to kind of push out this new program here. We love the youngsters when they're involved here. So McKenna, going to be a great star here. I get you young, and that means that every year of school, I just keep putting more and more on you. So by the time you're a high school senior, you'll be doing like 12 shows a week. No, not really. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> but we look forward to having you uh, do more for us, and we look forward to the fun that we're going to see you have when you're out there on your show. Tell everybody the name again. It's 4-H From My View. Okay. 4-H From My View, starring McKenna Stricker and guests, right? You'll have guests all the time. You'll yeah. be at different farms. So we'll have a lot of fun with that. Of course, you'll be able to watch that uh, video on demand on our website, rtc4.com. But uh, right now you get the pilot episode of... 4-H from My View, starring McKenna Stricker, right here on RTC TV4. McKenna Stricker, and we're here at All of Trail Cattle Company giving you a glimpse of my new show, 4-H from My View. Today we are with Roberta and Mark Kepler. We're going to be focusing on some goat essentials needs, um, showing and judging things you should do. Mark? Hello there. Good good morning to you. Thank you very much and welcome to our farm. We're glad to have you here today. We are going to go through a variety of things that we do to our goats. And one of the things I'm going to talk about today as we get into this program is I'm going to talk about young people like you getting into 4-H and some of the things you got to watch for in these goat projects when we're dealing with animals for the first time. So that's what we'll do. Royal Flush is one of our two sires that we have here, one of the um, bucks on our place, and we've put quite a bit of um, 
money into <laughs> we put warmer into him too yes we did we put money in into our bucks because they really contribute an awful lot to our program and so this particular buck comes from the newton farm sale that was held last year and his name is royal flush and i know you can't see but behind us is the other buckling or not buckling he's a true buck um, and he's from rooster ridge farms and his name is oliver and they make up a huge part of why we have some nice babies each year and we'll see them as we come along right so today what we did we brought royal flush out and we decided it was time to trim his feet and this should be done every six to eight weeks we do that so that he has a a better firmer foundation and you know how you if you're if you let your fingernails grow that's not so cool so they need to be trimmed down and so basically that's some care that we give to our animals. Mark? So going back in nature, they used to live out in the wild and they lived up on rocks and big rocky areas. That's their native area. And on those rocks, they, they ground off those hooves on those areas. Out here on the farm, especially when we give them grain, we have to give them some kind of a trimming like this periodically otherwise they go really long they fold over and next thing you know they're walking really bad and they and it's like having a really bad pair of shoes that mm -hmm. fold under and it'd be very difficult for them to walk so we'll take a look here and we'll go over and we'll get another goat out and take a look at her feet um, right now we are trying to get a different type of a breed of a goat we are getting a dairy goat right now um, we're actually going to be getting a goat named Tracy. We're going to put her up on the stand and look at her hooves and how they have been formed over time and how we will trim them. Now that we have Tracy here, she is eating. It helps on the stand. Um, we're going to take a look at her feet and see how the different hooves of they need trimmed or not trimmed. And Okay. Yes, let's let's look at her front foot here. Want to come around here? Okay, her feet should be nice and straight across, but you you can see here that they are overgrown, and it's very easy to just take these little nippers. Look, they're probably ten dollars at a feed store, and just take and take those edges off and make everything smooth, and it gives her her a better base to stand on. And just keeps those feet under control because like mark said many of these goats were were brought up in countries where they would have been on rocks and such which would have kept their feet smooth so just taking it down like that just gives her a better foundation makes her feet better if you look at her back foot here she's kind of walking on the side of it so we'll try and trim and make that a little bit better now, if you can trim, will this ever hurt a goat? Can you ever hurt a goat with these clippers? You sure can. If I cut too deep, just like on your fingernails, if we cut your fingernails too deep, you know how that hurts? Yes, we can definitely hurt her. We can make her bleed. And so we're, we're trying to be aware of that and keep the, the, the cutting to where we don't see pink. Once we see pink, we know we've gone deep enough and we don't want to go any deeper because we will hurt her. I usually take a little bit off of the front of the, the hoof there too to make it easier to get in there. But right now she's got manure built up in here and we don't want her walking on that. We want her to have a nice, see how there we did. We got a little bit of pink and a little bit of blood showing there. So that's plenty deep. We don't want to do any more to hurt her. The object is to help not to hurt. Anything else? Yeah, I think, you, you, again, as long as you keep feeding them grain, that makes their, their hose grow a lot faster. And so later on, as we take the kids off of her, she's got children or goats around her right now. Once we take them off, then she will not get so much grain and she won't be consuming as much in her won't be that way. Let's talk about her a little bit. She's a dairy goat and so a dairy goat is something that's kept for its uh, mammary and so for the milk production. 
we have no more dairy males around here, no bucks, and so they get bred to the uh, meat goats, and so her kids are half meat goat, half dairy goat, and in this situation here, uh, that's why we keep her. We like on our farm a little bit of dairy because dairies give a lot of milk, and because they give a lot of milk, they raise really nice kids. So you get the milk production from the dairy, and you get the meat production from the boar goats, and the two of them together really give us a nice, nice looking goat. Now, how can you tell in their udder if they're going to be a good or a low production milk mom? So a lot of it on this on the udder, you're taking a look at the uh, the size of the mammary, the size of the udder. You're also looking at the tie and how well it's tied in up here towards the top because you want it to be tied in with a lot of muscle. If it's really narrow and just hanging down, that's not very good, so we got to get that. We also want them to be uniform on each side. And what happens to us sometimes if she has triplets, um, sometimes one side gets uh, sucked on more than the other side, and so they get lopsided on us. We, we try not to do that for a dairy goat. But uh, just, a, just a, a large, capacious udder is what they talk about. That's what we'd like to have. Judge, when they're looking, when they're judging in a dairy goat show, the, the udder is all important. 40% of her score would be based there. How she attaches in the front and then the rear and whether she's even. And uh, sometimes a judge will take and have you take your animal back because you won't have milked them from, hmm, let's say, 2 o'clock the day before. So then you have your dairy goat show at 8 in the morning, they're full. And the judge likes to see them like that. There have been judges that will take, have you take your animal back and milk it out to see how much you get and then judge them even on an empty udder. It doesn't happen real often. But. So the other thing they look for when they judge these besides the udder is the size, the overall size, and the width of them, uh, how width they are and, and how how wide they are between the front legs and so the width of the front legs the dairy characteristic they even like this tail to be set up and high up there too on them and so uh, she's a, a fairly good goat how well is she done she if McKenna wants to McKenna can take her to the Marshall County Fair this year and the only class that she can compete in is for supreme doe she has won the grand champion class um, not recently Several because she ago. hasn't it probably about three years ago she was a grand champion so if she goes back this year we'll want to keep milking her even if we wean her children her kids will want to keep milking her to keep that udder so that it's nice and full because when you're when you're in the show ring, you don't want to be showing a dry dough you she's she has what you'd call capacity she has a big barrel this this is called the barrel and, you, and that's one thing that you'll want to learn uh, when you're showing goats they're gonna ask you questions which is all part of showmanship and so you learn your your body parts and you know what I'm not very good at that but I know a few of them and I know that the barrel here the bigger the barrel the more body capacity she has the more the more room she has to carry babies so that's a positive the wider she is through here as with most other animals too the wider they are again the more capacity they have and the more um, sought after those animals will be well, so I, Tracy has done a good job for us well I know that in boar goats they like to have thick legs is that the same on dairy goats not as important and we'll take a look at the thickness of the legs these legs on a dairy goat are a lot thinner than the hooves we're going to be taking a look at on these boar goats this here is Maya she is a boar goat um, how many kids does Maya have Maya has twins this year. Maya has twins this year. She has been a really good produced mother. Um, her babies this year actually look really good. And she didn't do too good in the ring, but she, the judge told her that her babies would do good. Um, yeah, the, ring she, the reason she didn't do really good in the ring is because she's half dairy and half boar. And so the dairy shows up in her, but when we take her and breed her to a boar buck, her kids are a quarter dairy and three-quarter boar and they really look very boar they really look very nice so she's a she is brilliant may not be a show goat but she can produce kids that end up being show goats that really look very nice uh, she has been around here she's three this is her second litter or litter oh. second uh, set of kids yes yes that she's had and um, she's a we're going to take a look at her feet and see how big they are okay yeah if, well it, you can see, well, I think you can see, even though she's, she has some 
um, dairy in her. I think she's got more powerful legs than what Tracy did. And especially you'll notice that when we look at the hooves. Um, her feet are, her feet are huge, like men's feet instead of shanty women's. She's just got a lot more leg to stand on, a lot more that supports her body. Um, do you remember when we were looking at Tracy's? Her, her feet were kind of petite. And this is a big old work boot of a, of a foot, uh, which, will, which will do well for her. She carries more weight than Tracy does and, and just is a bigger animal. So we're gonna talk about worms. And when we talk about worms, we're referring to internal parasites. And they are something that this animal will pick up out on the pasture. And it's not like an earthworm. It's a totally different species. They will, grazing out here on the grass, they'll pick up these little worms. They'll get the worms swallowed, go down into their stomach, and inside of their stomach they will attach and they'll draw blood. Kind of like what we think leeches do. Well, they just draw the blood right up out of that out of that stomach, and so they'll make them anemic. In other words, they'll just lack all that iron in their blood because they've taken all this blood out of them. The reason we worry about that is it will kill these goats. And and people think, well, I'll just go get me some dewormer and give them some medicine and it'll take care of them. Well, it turns out these worms have come very resistant to the medicine. Like we're talking about in human medicine today, we've got issues there where people become or the have resistance to uh, the antibiotics, the, some of the things that we have issues with. And so it's the same thing with these goats. So dewormer, one of the ways I tell what her level of worms is in her body is I can take a hold of her head and she don't like this at all. I can hold that eye and I can peel down that eyelid and I can look in there. And when I look in there and take a look at it, it's that color of that eyelid in there. What color is she? She ought to be really red and pink. This girl's got a worm problem, and and she needs to be treated for worms. And so she's going to stay right here, and I'm going to get some worm medicine taken care of because she needs to have an issue. She's got an issue with worms. And, and what it'll end up doing is all of a sudden someday she'll be sitting over in a corner and not looking too well. And because she's not looking well, she'll end up having, um, uh, may end up quit eating altogether and may go downhill, and she can die. So that's why when we have brand new 4-H'ers and people in 4-H and we're talking to people in 4-H, we really need to watch for these worms. And people say, oh, I got this nice little spot out in my yard. I'll go out there and let them graze in this grass. And they'll graze that grass right to the ground. And when they're grazing it really down to the ground like that, they're getting more and more worms coming into them. So we have to switch them and rotate them from pastures to pastures. So I'm going to get prepared and I'm going to give her some medicine to try to take care of these worms that she's got. And, and even though we have a resistance issue, we have other things we do for these animals. In fact, one of the things we do, I've got in my pocket right here, and something we've learned about is these little boluses. And inside of this little pill we have are little tiny pieces of wire, tiny pieces of copper wire. And what happens is we give that to them on a gun that puts it over their tongue and down their throat. And down in there, those little pieces of copper wire somehow work to co help control the worms. I don't know the mechanism. I don't think anybody knows the mechanism, but they do know it works. And so that's what they do. They give them these copper wire boluses. She's already had one, and she's still got an issue with uh, worms. So we'll try some medicine on her and see if it works out. So what we're going to do is we've got two different wormers we're going to give them. On the advice of our veterinarian, they say we ought to use two different wormering drugs. Two different families are not even related to each other because it's very difficult to take care of these worms. In her situation, she's not even on pasture. Here it is in the spring of the year, we're in the month of April here, and she's not even been out eating on pasture and she's really got worm issues already. So I've got a drenching gun, gun or syringe here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give her 40 cc's of this, which means I'm going to give her, there's 30 in this syringe, so I'll give her 220 cc doses of it. So I'll, I've mixed up some powder. It's a powder you mix up with water, and, um, and then we take this, and she never likes this. She don't like it at all. And I try to do this without getting myself bit. Take that down the side, over the tongue, down the back of the throat, and then she gets to drink some of that. 
and I gotta do it again. <laughs> it's alright, Dave. This particular warmer is called Levamazole. There's only three classes of warmers, and this is one of the newer ones, but there are there are farms that are already having problems with the levamazole not being effective, and that's why they tell us, go ahead and use a second warmer. So we also have Cydectin down below, which is in a different class. So he'll go ahead and use some of that as well. Mm. And I don't think this doe has had a worm issue in the past. <coughs> she certainly was white. And when even you after doing all this, she's still gonna like us. I'll guarantee it. And when you were talking about the bullets earlier with the iron in them? Okay, they're boluses. 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 <laughs> yep. And they're copper. The copper boluses. Yeah. Yeah. These were the syringes that you, how would you do this? All right, we'll do that in a little bit here. I'll show you how we'll do that. Except I'm not going to do it to her because mm -hmm. she was done not too long ago. You can use copper boluses about twice a year is what I under, understand. Yeah. And she has had one, oh, yet this year, like in the last three to four months, she has had a copper bolus. We gave them to everybody the last time we, we did feet. So probably eight to ten weeks ago. Ooh, tastes good, doesn't it? I see you got to get a little bit more. And he's, he's estimating how much he's using based on what he perceives her body weight to be. You know, by rights, we ought to weigh her, but I got an estimate about how much she is. And in this medicine, um, more is better than too little. Right. Okay. So, now, that gun you've got there, let's pick that up. This is a bolus gun. And um, unfortunately, what I ended up doing is this, this hole is bigger than what my, my uh, piece of uh, copper wire is. So I stuck a little marshmallow in there and to make it a little bit smaller and then my bolus will fit in there like that then I can do the same thing and go over and then I pull the trigger and it falls out down in her throat mm -hmm. and that's how we do that. So, Before they used to fight us a lot when it was just the bolus, Yeah. the marshmallow seemed to make everything just a little bit nicer and, and you, some people swear by Fig Newtons and uh, what else have we tried? I know when you try it with your finger, you end up getting with a bit finger out of it. I know that. Yep. So that's why you end up using something like that because they got sharp teeth back there that will bite that. This is McKenna's first year in the in the goat project, and she's been coming over and working with the goats since January, about once a week, and she's gotten her hands dirty several times doing different tasks. But one of the things we're learning is what you do in the show ring, and so. Right now, she has a dairy doe named Shakira, and Shakira is going to go in for the Supreme class and also for the mother-daughter class with one of her kids from last year. And when she's showing, you want to keep her head up <laughs> so she can't eat. Yeah, maybe put her back. So, so basically, what she's learning is that the head needs to be up, and we'll, we'll be wearing, or she will be wearing a collar that fits right under her neck like you've got her now, which means that you'll have better control of her. And when you're showing a goat, you're never in the way of the judge being able to see your goat. So, Mark's your judge. Let's set her up. And okay. So, Mark's your judge, and he's giving you instructions. He's telling you to set her up. So, what you want to do is put her feet underneath her square and, and, and try and make her look her best. And she's, the front feet are okay. There you go. All right, now, so I'm going to take a look at it from the side. And I'm going to be taking a look at the back. And it's fairly good. And as the judge moves around, McKenna moves around. So now the judge has easy access to the other side of her. And all the time, McKenna's watching what the judge does. And she's reacting accordingly. And she's always paying attention to what her goat is doing, but she's also paying attention to the judge. And she's standing back nicely to give the judge a good view of what her animal is like. The judge can see how wide she is and, and can look all the way around. We never go around the back, never, no, no. You're just young at it. You're just getting started. But you always go around the front. 
And sometimes you just can't help it. Yeah, get her set and and then you can come around the front of her and do it. Oh, Shakira, just set her up. You know what, when that happens, you just take her, just take her and walk her straight out and turn her around and, and make her make a circle. And now you come to the other, yeah, the side that Mark's not on. Okay, keep her head up and set her up. Set her up there. There you go. There you go. Okay, so that's what we're looking at the judge is standing back here looking at this one he'll look at yours go on to the next one go on to the next one and then he'll pull out and kind of do one of these things where he kind of looks at the whole line of them here and looks at them all down there keep that head up keep that under her chin there you go and then you'll keep her under control that's how you control her with that so she don't move on you all right in the meantime you'd have a nice line here if we all are in line you'd be in that line it's already there okay and that's really how we do our judging, and, and we just let the, the judge. And the judge will come up to you and say, when was she born? And you, like everybody else, will have checked with your parents ahead of time to find out when that she was born. Or in this case, you'll be talking to Roberta over here about when she was born. Because he'll want to know that. When was she born? How old is she? I think she's, she got? I'd have to look it up right now, but I think she's five, and she's had quite a quite a number of kids she generally this year she has twins lots of years we hope you enjoyed the show and hoping that this is informative seeing it next time